All right, here we go. Uh, if you watched my last video, I said that I've got some stuff that I'm going to show that uh, I have bought and ordered. You see, I got a little bit of money. I've sold some of my musical things. I've uh, swapped a few things. Uh, I got the uh, COVID whatever incentive check, all that kind of rigmarole, which a lot of that has gone to like, you know, paying off one of my credit cards. But <clears throat> I thought while I had the chance with a little extra dough, I was going to try to get some records that I've been wanting to get for a long time that I haven't been able to because they've been elusive or expensive. Now, I didn't spend a heck of a lot, but a little bit more than I usually spend. But without going any farther, uh, <clears throat> this, an original of this would be a grail for me. But this is uh, Ellington... Duke Ellington. This is uh, Masterpieces by Ellington. And this is the uh, Acoustic Sounds 45 RPM version of it. <clears throat> and trying to find an OG of this, an original, is impossible. I've seen some reissues around that were pretty beat. So, and even these, even these uh, 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 Acoustic Sounds uh, QRP pressings have been kind of elusive. They apparently sold out very quick and uh, very quickly. And uh, they'd recently put some fresh produce up there. Uh, this was the only one available was the 45 RPM. Beautiful. Oh, listen to that. Duke Ellington is is probably my favorite jazz artist. And this is one that I've been wanting forever and ever and ever. And uh, so glad that I was able to get this. All right, next. All right, next. Uh, I went to, there is a uh, hobby shop in Tazewell, Virginia. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, the Duke Ellington, I ordered it directly from the Acoustic Sounds website, just to let you know. Okay. So anyway, next I went to, um, uh, there's a hobby shop in Tazewell, Virginia, and this guy's always getting some pretty good records in there, and I don't know where he finds these, but these are freaking amazing records. And I paid a little bit more for these than... I usually pay f locally for records. He did want, you know, the uh, uh, premium prices for him, but I worked with him, and it was all cool. But anyway, without further ado, uh, this is an EMI Harvest British pressing of Fireball by Deep Purple. It's got that textured, textured cover with it. Beautiful copy. I mean, very little wear on it. And uh, the record is VG++. And it's all, like I said, British pressing. And if you are familiar with this album from the U.S. presses, that this has got a little uh, different uh, song listing on it. Um, on the, uh, the U.S. version, the third song on side one is uh, A Strange Kind of Woman. But on the British presses, and I guess other presses overseas, the song is Demon's Eye. And I love Demon's Eye. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. Strange Kind of Woman's a good tune, but to me, Demon's Eye was worth the price of admission. And this is such a great album. And this British press is sounds freaking fantastic so yeah I, I paid a few extra bucks for that one and here's another one i i got this for about the same price as the uh other one this is a uh, thin lizzie black rose got a little bit of wear on it but the 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 record isn't you know it's it's all vg plus very good 
And I, I like Thin Lizzy. I've got, I used to have this record years ago and purged it like so many records I had. And, and I was really stoked when I went into that hobby shop and he had a, this copy. This actually looks better than my original copy. Uh, blues guys, uh, Gary Moore was uh, on lead guitar, second lead guitar for this album. And then I paid a little bit more for this one than his other ones, but this guy liked to swap uh, heavy metal records, you know. So I had, uh, I took, you know, I, I think I had some uh, 80s metal. I don't don't remember the titles, but I took them and I swapped them. And he gave me a good deal, gave me a good trade in. But Squawk by Budgie, the beautiful Roger Dean cover. This is a uh, it's a sample, a sample copy, which I guess it's this uh, cap label. I guess it's their version of a promo cover. It's on the cap label. Man, just. Oh, I love this album. <clears throat> I'd been wanting to get a copy of this for a long time. And like I said, I walked in and saw this. And I said, I got the money in my pocket. I'm going to get it. I would regret it if I didn't. This is a nice, uh, I think it's early 70s, 71 maybe, or 72. But uh, good early 70s uh, hard rock with a little bit of uh, some progressive tendencies. Killer. <clears throat> and let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. I uh, went to uh, John's camera and record shop in Blacksburg, which I go there quite often, and uh, found these two. Uh, Small Creeps Day by Mike Rutherford. This is, I think, his first solo album. Uh, of course, he was still with Genesis when this album came out. And what I had forgotten about this album, it's a 1980 release, was that this is really a very progressive album. I didn't remember it being that, that progressive because I remember I listened to it in 1980, which was 41 years ago. Duh. And I couldn't remember much about it, but uh, anyway, glad to get this one down there. And uh, I saw this one in there from my blues collection. The best of Brownie McGee and Sonny Terry. I've seen a few of you vinyl community people showing this album and some other albums by Brownie McGee and Sonny Terry. And yeah, this delivers... This is just some great, great blues. Ah, oh, I love it. Just real stripped down. Just a couple of guitars, harmonica, and the guy singing. You know, maybe somebody slapping a rhythm on something, but uh, awesome, awesome record. I've been trying to get more blues, and uh, found this reissue at Cheap Thrills in Princeton. It was like, gosh, it was like 18 bucks or something, you know. Howlin' Wolf, Rockin' Chair. And you see, this is a reissue, 180 gram. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's got classic Howlin' Wolf in there. L L Little Red Rooster, you know, Wang Dang Doodle. Man, just some good stuff. So, my blues collection got a big shot in the arm. All right, now a couple of... Um, couple of things. I, uh, these next records I ordered from Amazon, okay? I ordered these from Amazon, and I've been wanting to get copies of these, but as usual, you know, I, my budget is constrained. But since I have a little bit of money, I, I got this um, UFO Flying One Hour Space Rock. Now, this is a uh, very early uh, UFO, and I know some of you people are familiar with UFO from uh, from the 70s, you know, Lights Out in London, uh, Doctor Doctor, uh, man, yeah, they're, they're, 
but this this group here had a slightly different sound. It had uh, the same vocalist, so you can tell the vocalist. But the style of music this is this is pretty much like rave music from from the late sixties. This has got like a, a guitar player just noodling his brains out, you know, for for an hour on here, you know, playing through his fuzz tone and his echo plex, and you know they add phasing and all kinds of weird sound effects. And uh, this is actually not a bad album, other than the noodling. Uh, I had heard cuts from this, and I thought, wow, that sounds pretty cool, and says one hour and it is about a one hour it's got like 30 minutes on each side it's a single record set but I honestly think that if they got like the uh, one of the long songs and just shortened it down and had like one side with the, the with one of the 20 minute songs and then the other three or four songs you know edit down that one long space jam to a three or four minute song so I think this would have been a stronger album just my opinion you know, but like I said, but if you like uh, side one of this is the best to me. So if you like that that sixties, you know, uh, rave up style jamming with uh, fuzz tones and echo plexes and uh, just spacey stuff, man, this is this is you probably like this. But anyway, like I said, I've been wanting to get this one for a while, and uh, I've got like I said a bunch of UFO albums. Hey, this is another keeper. And I ordered this, the, the latest from Osric Tentacles. This is Space for Earth. And <clears throat> what I liked about this album is it included uh, several of the alumni from past incarnations of Osric Tentacles. Osric Tentacles is mainly the work of Ed Wynn. He is the uh, basically uh, the the leader of the band, the main songwriter. He plays lead guitar. He plays synthesizers. Uh, so it's pretty much his concoction. But uh, wow, this is really a good album. Oh, let me show you the vinyl. Love like love the Osrics. Nice little psychedelic inner sleeve there. But beautiful, look at that beautiful kind of, I guess that's kind of like a translucent turquoise or something. Beautiful album. So, anyway, love Osric Tentacles. I've got, I don't think I have every single album they ever put out, but I'm sure I've got at least 95% of, of all of their, their recording, uh, their, their uh, albums. I've got several of their videos. I've got some bootlegs. Love Osrics. All right, and finally, okay, this one cost me the most. I just got it. I haven't even opened it yet. And this original copies of this go for four digits. And I'm not talking about two digits and a decimal point. I'm talking about four digits, then decimal point, And usually... The first digit is higher than one, okay? <laughs> Give you some idea. Well, this record has been reissued, and uh, now the reissues are hard to freaking find because people have bought these up, and if you do find them online, it, you know they flip them for double or, or three times the price of the original re, uh, reissue cost. <clears throat> But anyway, I found a seller in Greece through Amazon. He was selling through Amazon, but he was based out of Greece. And he had he had a copy of this album that I've been wanting forever and ever. And it was either too expensive, or when I tried to find a reissue, they were sold out or way too expensive. But this one was, it wasn't cheap. This is probably the most I've ever paid for an album from Amazon, you know, other than maybe a box set or something. But, uh, uh, let's open this. 
and see what we what we got here. Uh, yes, indeed. Nice, nice packaging. Like I said, this came from Athens, Greece. When I ordered it, I, I thought it was uh, just, you know, like Amazon, but no. That's probably the reason it's so expensive. Oh, Jew. Good. Goo, 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 goo. Jew, goo, goo. Yeah. I'm, I'm spacing out already. Uh, uh, oh, my, oh, my. A thank you note from, I guess, the seller. Ah! Uh, a grail. A grail. Yes. Still sealed. Oh. Finally. Finally. Oh, man. What does it say on there? And it looks perfect. No, no uh, damaged corners. It includes a seven inch single. Black heavyweight vinyl. Kaleidoscope. Tangerine Dream. Oh man. 2017 Kaleidoscope Sounds. Originally apparently on Fontana. Yeah, if you're not familiar with this album, go to Discogs or look on eBay and look for to see what originals of this cost. And I even talk, I'm not even talking about original British presses. I'm talking about like Japanese presses and other reissues that, oh, this is just, man. So, yeah, I'm definitely, definitely going to be jamming on this tonight. All right, and the last, the very last thing I want to show you before this gets too long, I'm going to try to keep it 20 minutes is this was my my biggest out of pocket splurge i went to uh barnes and noble and i this album came out like about three years ago i wanted a copy of it then but i couldn't afford it but i went to barnes and noble when i had a little bit of that extra money and they had one copy of this on display behind the counter and it's probably the reason that nobody's bought it but I went ahead and splurged and got the Beatles 50th anniversary box set of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. I don't know if you can see that, but it's got that 3D lenticular, <laughs> lenticular cover. It's got, uh, my gosh, it's got uh, four audio CDs. Uh, which is the, uh, I think the stereo mix. It's got two discs of, of outtakes and uh, uh, just studio session uh, recordings. And then it's got like the mono mix that was mixed from apparently the uh, original mono tape. And, uh, and then it's got a, it's got a Blu-ray and a DVD, which includes the making of Sergeant Pepper and uh, uh, little documentaries and some music videos. But I love it. They got this thing set up like it looks like a an old EMI uh, tape box. Let me see if I can get this open without destroying something. But yeah, it's inside. It looks like a copy of the LP, but this is what holds the CDs. And I know most of you all have probably seen these. If, if you don't already have it, you know, uh, yeah, you can find all kinds of opening, unboxing videos of this. But, man, so tickled to get this. So that's it. That's what I have, uh, have bought. And I think I'm done for a while, to be honest with you, because between the Duke Ellington, the Beatles, uh, the... Uh, Osric Tentacles, the uh, Tangerine Dream by Kaleidoscope, 
I'm done. I cannot top these. I, you know, I, I may find something sometime, but uh, anyway, thanks for watching, my friends. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope you liked what I showed. Uh, so, I'm a little bit over 20 minutes, so I'm out of here. Peace. Bye.